In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a simple house in SketchUp. The point of this video is to teach beginners how to learn the tools in SketchUp, and we're going to build this exact house, so if you follow along, you'll build this exact model right here. Now I want to point out this is just a model and it is not sufficient for construction drawings or anything like that. So if I were to click on the roof and delete it, we could look inside and realize there's no framing in here. The walls are hollow in between. It's just a simple box. But if you're learning SketchUp, I would recommend starting with a simple model of a house like this just so that you learn the tools. And then once you get a little more experienced, you can build the framing and actually make construction ready houses in SketchUp. So to build this exact house, we're going to first delete it. So I want to point out before I start that every single tool up here in the toolbar has a shortcut on your keyboard. So as I move throughout the tutorial, I'm going to call out the shortcuts that we're using. That way you can learn them as we go. One of the best tips I can give you if you're a beginner is to learn the shortcuts of the tools because that will save you a ton of time. So I will call out the tool and I will also display it on the screen just like this. So notice I'm using the orbit tool and I have a little tab up that says orbit. So the orbit tool, the shortcut is O on the keyboard. So let's get started. If I hit spacebar, it gives me the selector tool, which you can find right up here in the top left corner. If you're on the free version, you'll find it at the top of the toolbar on the left. So if I click and drag a square around our project, it selects the whole project. And now I'm going to hit delete. So I've deleted the whole project and we're going to start from scratch and I'm going to show you how to build that exact model. So one of the first tools we'll use is the rectangle tool, which is R on the keyboard. And to use the rectangle tool, you'll just click somewhere and then start dragging it across. And then you'll click again when you want to set the rectangle in place. So before I do that, I'm going to type in 20 apostrophe comma 32 apostrophe enter. So that gave me a 20 foot by 32 foot rectangle. And notice in the bottom right corner right here is the dimensions. When you're typing in dimensions, you can see them there. And if you don't put apostrophe, you'll get inches. So if I typed 20 comma 32, I'd get a 20 inch by 32 inch rectangle. So now that we have our footprint for our house, what we're going to do is create basically a four inch border around the entire thing and we're going to raise that up for the walls. So the fastest way to do that is to hit F on the keyboard. That gives you the offset tool and then you'll just click and drag on any surface. So right here we're going to click and drag across our footprint here and if I just stop anywhere and hit four enter that's going to give me a four inch border around. So what that tool does, the offset tool creates a shape inside of another shape, just like it, only you can make it smaller. So now that we have a smaller rectangle inside of a bigger rectangle, we have this four inch border around it. And if we click on it, I'm going to hit space bar for the selector tool and click on the face here. Now I'm going to hit P for the push pull tool. And you can find that right here. This is what it looks like we're going to pull that face up. So if I just pull it up a little bit and let off, I can type in 10 apostrophe. Remember that means 10 feet and hit enter. So now we have 10 foot walls going around the building. So the next thing I'm going to do is create the roof structure here. And this is really simple. We're going to hit L. L is the line tool. So you'll use it to draw lines and stuff. And I'm going to use it right here. If I move along the edge here, notice the blue dot pops up. That's the midpoint. So that's dead center on our wall. I'm going to click right there and I'm going to drag it up. Now notice when I'm coming up, there's sometimes a blue line, sometimes there's a green line, sometimes there's a black line. Um, those represent the axes on the drawing. So you have a blue axis right here, a red one here. Notice the green one going this way. So when we draw that line, if we want to stay on the blue axis, which we do, we can hit the up arrow key on the keyboard and it will lock it into the blue axis. Now, no matter what I do, it won't come off the blue axis. So I'm going to type in 96, which is eight feet, 96 inches. I could have typed in eight apostrophe 
And then I'm just going to connect the top of that line to the very outside corner. And I'm going to do the same thing right here. And remember that this building is 32 feet long. So if I want to connect all the way to this side, I can hit L for the line tool, click here, and then I'll drag along the green axis. And again, if you're lost like this, you can hit the left arrow key and it will lock it into the green axis. And then I'm going to type 32 apostrophe. So that's 32 feet. And since our building's 32 feet, that puts us right on the end here. And I'm going to do the same thing, connect it to the corners. So I'll orbit around with the orbit tool, which is O on your keyboard. And then I will use the line tool to connect to the outside corners. So now we have the shape of our building. I'm going to hit E for the eraser tool and erase this line. And now I'm going to come over here and I'm going to do the same thing in the front. E for eraser and just erase these lines here. So now I'm going to take that same tool that we created our walls with, the offset tool, which is F on your keyboard. And I'm going to create an offset around this. So notice it makes the exact same shape and I can just click and drag it anywhere, let off and then type in the distance I want. So I'm going to type in 10, one zero, enter. So now we have a 10 inch border around and I'm going to do pretty much the same thing we did with the walls, only right here I'm going to click on the face of the outer edge here, hit P for the push pull tool, and I'm going to pull this out and type in 24, so 24, that's 24 inches or two feet. And so the next thing we'll do is we will add some colors to this. We'll add some textures that look like wood and metal siding and that sort of thing. So if you hit B, it will bring up the paint tool. So if you're on the free version, the paint tool will come up over here. Uh, but if you hit B, it will pop up nonetheless. So um, you'll go to the little search icon if you're in the free version. If you're in this version, which is the pro version, you can click on the little brick here and then go to this drop down and you can select just about anything. So I'm gonna to go to wood. Actually, I'm going to go to, let's go to brick, cladding, and siding. And I'm gonna click this one right here. So if I click on that, click on my project, it paints it right on. So I'm hitting O for the orbit tool. And then now that I use this last, I can just hit B again, and it will paint the last thing I've painted. So I'm going to add some metal roofing. So I will look for roofing. Here it is. And you'll see that my metal roofing is black here. The way that I did that, and this, this is the only difference in this entire tutorial from the free version. The free version will give you a red roof. And unfortunately, I haven't found a way to change the color of the roof in the free version, but I would still make this project with a red roof or just use one of these different materials. Um, but in the pro version, you can change the color of the material. So I did that by clicking on the color bringing this drop down and clicking edit. And then with this color selector right here, I can click on anything. I can change it to any color I want, or I can simply just pick a color from up here. So I'll pick something like that. And then if I hit B, I can select this and I can paint it right onto the building. So I'm gonna orbit around, hit B, O for orbit orbit around some more. So uh, I'm going to paint these black as well. And then I'll come in here. I'll go back to brick cladding and siding. I'll select this one, hit B, and then I'll paint this into the image, into the model. So um, that is how you use the paint tool. And we'll use it a little bit more as we make doors and windows here. So I want to talk about how I usually make a door if I want it centered. There's lots of ways to do this. You can measure across with the tape measure and, and set little guidelines and stuff. But what I usually do, let's say we want a door that is 36 inches wide and 84 inches tall. I'll hit L for the line tool and I'll find the middle. And then I'm going to come up 84 inches. So I I'll type in 84 and hit enter. And then since I want it 36 inches wide, I'll just come over 18 inches which is half of 36 and come back down here. And then I'll do the same thing right here. 18, enter, come down and connect it to the bottom. 
hit E for the eraser tool, and I'll just erase the middle line there. So now I'm going to hit F for the offset tool and create sort of a little window in this door. So that looks about right. I'll type in 10 for 10 inches. That looks good. And then I'm going to hit B for the paint tool and go to the colors, or you can use these color pencils and click right here to make the door black. And then to make this look like glass, we can go to the materials. We can find glass and mirrors pick any of these and click right there. So now we have a door, we have walls and a roof. Let's add some windows to this project. So if I wanted to add some triangle windows up here, here's a cool way to do that. You can hit L for the line tool. And the first thing I'm gonna do is make a line all the way across here. We're going to delete it after we finish this here. But um, what we can do, actually let's draw another one from the midpoint here to the top. So now we have two triangles. If we hit F for the offset tool, actually, before you do that, click on your face with the selector tool, then hit F, and now we can create some windows. So I will put that, I'll type in 10, we'll do 10 inches again, F for the offset tool, 10. So now we've got two windows. And if we wanted to add some trim to them, we could click on them one more time, F again for the offset tool. If we wanted the trim to be three inches, we could just hit three. And now we have a three inch border around them. So I'll do that here. I'll click on the face, hit F for the offset tool, bring them over, type in three. And now we have two windows. So we can simply paint those windows just like that. And then we can go back to the color. If we wanted black trim, we can just paint that right onto the windows. So now we have two windows, and what I'll do is hit E for the eraser tool, and I'll just erase those lines. I was just using those as guides so that we could use the offset tool. So now for windows, I do something pretty similar. I'll come over here. If I wanted a window in this area, first I'll hit T for the tape measure tool, and then I'll measure from here to here to find out how much space I have. So I have seven feet and eight inches. So I'm going to make a window six feet wide, and instead of measuring, doing any math and measuring just little markers on the outside, I'll just come to the center with the line tool. I'm going to come up 42 inches, 42, enter. Now I'll come over three apostrophe, enter. So that's three feet. Come up four feet, four apostrophe, enter. And we could be using inches here. So now I'm going to come over six feet. And instead of six apostrophe, I could just type in 72 enter. And instead of four feet, I could type in four eight for 48 inches, enter, and come back to here. So now I'll just erase that line and we'll do the same thing. Offset tool. We'll use it just like we have been with a three inch border. And there's a couple ways we could copy this and move this over here. One way if, okay, let's do that. Cause I, I would usually just draw the other one, but I probably don't do everything as efficient as I could. So here's one way to do that. We'll find out we've got 10 inches from the edge to the edge of our window. So if we come over here with the tape tool, which is T and we type in 10, that gives us a guideline right here. So now if I double click with the selector tool on this, and then hold shift and double click on the trim part. It selects all of that. Now if I hit M, this is the move tool. If I were to move this, it would just move this and not copy it. But while the move tool is selected, you can hit option. If you are on a Mac, if you're on a Windows, you're going to hit control. Notice the little plus symbol on our thing down there. That allows us to move a copy. So again, it's M for the move tool, option for copy if you're on Mac, control for copy if you're on Windows. So now I'm going to just move a copy all the way to our little line there. And there we are, we copied it. And now I probably should have painted it first because then I wouldn't have to do that again. So I'll paint the trim black again, go up here to materials, glass and mirrors, paint some glass there. That's the basics of it. Um, 
the model I started with had some windows on the side, but I just showed you how I make windows. So I really don't like wasting people's time. So I try to make these videos as concise as possible, but that is how you model a house in SketchUp. So if you wanted to fool around with the interior, I'll, I'll show you something else besides windows. So I'm not wasting your time. If you wanted to model something in the interior, you could simply click on the roof and delete it, hit delete. And you could start making little things in there. You could make a loft, you could set some walls. And, uh, you know, for instance, if you wanted to make some walls, you could simply draw some lines. We'll come over here, you know, and use the push pull tool to pull the walls up. And uh, one thing I'll point out is if you make a mistake, you can always hit Command Z if you're on Mac or Control Z if you're on Windows. So if I clicked on this and I deleted it and I thought, oh no, I didn't want to do that, Command Z puts it right back. So that is the undo button. And yeah, that is how you make a simple house in SketchUp. And let me know in the comments how I can make these tutorials better. I'm going to do some more in-depth ones with framing and just really big projects, but I've been really holding off on that because from what I understand, most people are probably beginners watching this, and I want to make it as beginner-friendly as possible. So if I can do that better, let me know how. And I really appreciate you watching. So uh, thank you, and I'll see you in the next video.